All right, let's go to a slightly more complicated equation. Uh, you might get nervous when you first see this equation because you see the negative one on the left side, so on the right side rather. But remember, in, if you look at the equation fully, this is not just the absolute value equal to negative one. There's more going on in the equation. We actually have three times the absolute value of two x minus five minus seven equals negative one. When we're solving absolute value equations, it is important that we always isolate the absolute value before we actually use those rules that we described in the first slide. So isolate the absolute value before we try to break it into the two scenarios of being on the left side of zero and on the right side of zero. So let's do that here. In this example, we would first want to, to get this by itself, we want to get rid of the seven and we want to get rid of the three. Well, seven is being subtracted, so we would add seven to both sides. That does something nice for us in that negative one plus seven is six. So we get rid of that negative that was maybe a little bit of a worry. Then we divide out the three. And so now we have isolated that absolute value. Once we have it isolated, then we can break it into the two parts. Because remember, we're saying that the distance of 2x minus 5 from 0 is 2. So that could be in the negative realm or the positive realm. So we'll break that into both sides. And it doesn't matter which one you put on the left or which one you put on the right. I have a tendency to start with the positive and then write the negative. Now, to solve this, we're going to isolate x in each equation. So we'll add set 5 to get 7, and then divide by 2 to get 7 halves. That would be one solution, or in our other side, our other solution would be negative 2 plus 5 is 3, and then x is equal to 3 halves. We should check both of those, but if we've done our work right, we should get a true statement. So let's check those. Check first. 7 halves. So 3 times 2 times 7 halves, I should say 3 times the absolute value of 2 times 7 halves minus 5, close absolute value, minus 7 equals negative 1. Work from the inside out. The 2's are going to cancel, so I'm going to get 7 minus 5, which is the absolute value of 2. The absolute value of 2 is just 2. 3 times 2 is going to be 6. 6 minus 7 is negative 1. So we get a true statement in our first equation. Our second equation, we'd use 3 halves. So 3, I shouldn't say second equation. To check our second solution, we're going to use 3 halves in our equation. 3 times the absolute value of 2 times 3 halves minus 5. Close your absolute value, minus 7 equals negative 1. I'm going to try to squeeze this all in. So 3 times the absolute value of, this is actually those 2's cancel, so I get 3 minus 5 inside the absolute value. 3 minus 5 is actually negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is going to be a positive 2, so I end up with 3 times 2 minus 7 which then looks just like what we had over there. 6 minus 7 equals negative 1, negative 1 equals negative 1. So both of those solutions check, so we again have a solution set that contains two values. The solution set is 3 halves comma 7 halves. You can write either one of those first or second. Traditionally in mathematics we write the smaller number first. Here's another equation. This is the absolute value of 4 minus 5x over 6. All of that's in the absolute value equal to 3. Now remember we said earlier in the last problem, always isolate your absolute value. Well, luckily here, we already have it isolated. And so we're fine there. But if we didn't have the absolute value by itself, we would want to start by isolating it. So at this point, we can immediately think through back to that scenario that this distance, the distance of the stuff in here, is going to be 3 from 0. Now it could be 3 in the positive realm or 3 in the negative realm. So we need to set this inside equal to a positive 3 or set it equal to a negative 3. 
So you're going to need to solve these two equations, and you will get two solutions. To clear fractions, we're going to multiply by the common denominator of 6 on both sides. So I'll do that on both sides. So here we have the 6s canceling. So I just get 4 minus 5x equals 18. Subtract that 4 from both sides. Remember, your 5x is still negative, but subtract the 4 so we get 14. And then divide out the negative 5, so x is negative 14 fifths. So our first solution um, is negative 14 fifths. Over here, our 6s cancel, and we multiply both sides by 6. We get negative 18 on the right side. Subtract 4, just like we did in the previous one. So we get a negative 22, because negative 18 minus 4 is a negative number. Then divide by that negative 5. When I divide a negative by a negative here, I'm going to get a positive 22 fifths. Okay. Now, I left these numbers as improper fractions. If you so prefer, you can write them as mixed numbers. Your choice. So this would be negative 2 and 4 fifths. And this would be uh, 4 and 2 fifths. You do not have to do that. I just wanted to, to mention that you can either give your answer as an improper fraction or a mixed number. So we should check those. The reason I have a tendency to myself leave them as improper fractions is that when you check, the calculation comes out better if you have improper fractions. So when I go to check this, I'm going to plug in. Uh, for x, negative 14 fifths, because it's going to work out in terms of my calculation better. All over 6, and we want that to be equal to 3. Let's see if it comes out. So first off, the 5s are going to cancel, so you're going to get 4 minus a negative 14 over 6. That's still in the absolute value. Uh, continuing to simplify, when I subtract a negative, I get a positive, so this becomes 18 over 6. and the absolute value of 18 over 6 is just the absolute value of 3, and that's 3. So the first number that we got checks. And then let's do the second number. 22 over 5, the absolute value of 4 minus 5 times 22 over 5, all over 6. Is that equal to 3? Well, let's take a look. The 5's cancel, so we're going to get 4 minus 22 in my numerator over 6. Is that equal to 3? 4 minus 22 is negative 18. Negative 18 divided by 6 is going to be a negative 3. And the absolute value of negative 3 really is 3. So once again, both of those solutions check. And therefore, the solution set is going, going to again have two values in it, in particular, I started with the low one, that would be negative 2 and 4 fifths if I wanted to write it as a mixed number. Or I could write it as the improper fraction as well, your choice, comma, 4 and 2 fifths. Again, it's your choice whether to write it as an improper fraction or a mixed fraction. The check is always better as an improper fraction. We could check this equation using decimals. That's what I want to do quickly. And the nice thing about um, checking to have these in improper or mixed fraction form is they're going to be easier to see in decimals that way or compare. But let's check with decimals real quick. All right, here we are in Desmos. Let's type in the left and the right side of the previous equation and see if it, we get solutions that check. So I'm going to type in y equals, and then we want the absolute value of that entire fraction. So you're going to need to use parentheses to show that everything is inside the absolute value. 4 minus 5x in the numerator. And remember I talked about with fractions, you can highlight the numerator before you hit the division symbol, and it will understand that all of that numerator is in the denom in the numerator rather. Then I've got six in the denominator, and I get my nice graph coming up here. It's nice and blue in this example. Now I also want to graph y equals three, which is the right side of the equation. And as you can see, I have a couple of places where the v for the absolute value is intersecting with that horizontal line. In particular. One of the points is at 4.4. Now, if you think about 4.4, 4, 
one of our answers when we did this algebraically was four and two fifths. Well, if you were to convert two fifths into a decimal, that would be 0.4. So that matches one of our solutions we got algebraically perfectly. And the other intersection is at negative 2.8. Remember how our mixed number for the other example was negative two and four fifths? Well, four fifths as a decimal is 0.8. So those two solutions perfectly match what we got algebraically. So where we're seeing the graphs intersect um, in Desmos is exactly uh, where we, well, in relationship to the solutions we got algebraically. Let's do one example where we use an absolute value inside a function. So let's say f of x is equal to the absolute value of x plus 7. Now notice that plus 7 is outside the absolute value of x. If I wanted to find all x for which f of x equals 18, I would want to start by first of all taking what I know f of x is equal to and subbing it in to the equation I'm trying to solve. So we would put the absolute value of x plus 7 in for f of x and solve for it when it's equal to 18. Remember, if you're when you're solving absolute value equations, you must isolate the absolute value. If you don't isolate the absolute value um, before you use that rule that we talked about, you won't get the right solutions coming up. So um, to subtract the 7 from both sides, we're going to get the absolute value of x equals 11. What this is saying is that x, the inside of the absolute value, is 11 units from 0 on a number line. So that means it could be either in the positive direction or in the negative direction. And of course, last time I said I usually write the negative in the, on the right, but in this case I wrote the negative on the left. The main thing is that you have to be on both sides of zero with your result. There's nothing else to isolate here. X is by itself in both cases, so these are our two solutions. If you wanted to, you could check this. I would go back to the original function, f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 7. If we plug either of those numbers in, we should get 18. Let's see if we do. If I plug the negative 11 in, the absolute value of negative 11 is 11, and 11 plus 7 is 18. Uh, that checks. If we look at f of positive 11, the absolute value of positive 11 is going to be 11, and 11 plus 7 is 18. So it checks in both cases. So um, to find, we wanted to find all x for which f of x is equal to 18. There are two x values. So our two solutions for this equation are negative 11 and 11.